look like? Tell me your name, sir. My name's Lorenzo Quinones. And uh, you are a Vietnam veteran? Yes, served in the United States Marines in 72 to 73 when I suffered an injury, ended huh. my career. Well, thank you for your service, sir. Thank you. And, and we're here to, 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 to visit Lorenzo because Lorenzo has taken up art and painting. And uh, he called me, he wants to be a part of AvaFest coming up, and he was telling me how how doing art is very pleasing for him. And I, I'm just, before we get into the interview, I just want to show you, this is a canvas that he's working on right now. This is what people who begin to discover the uh, healing properties of art, they begin to do. Look at this setup that he has right here. All of this paint. He's got these frames over here that he can paint on. And I would say, uh, Lorenzo, that you, sir, are an artist. No, I'm, I'm just a beginner uh, trying to get somewhere. Well, and it's helping me with my struggles. With, during all these years of suffering with PTSD and never knowing it, and suffering with severe emotional anxiety, um, just feeling like dealing with um, why did I survive with guilt and, uh, and doing this this kind of putting everything back on the back burner. Um, so, what is this painting that you're getting ready to start doing now? I'm trying to do the river delta. Hmm. The Mekong del Delta parts of it, I just can't get the colors right. There was no blue skies over there. There was uh, brown water. Um, there wasn't chocolatey. I just can't get the colors right. Uh, there were gray, gray and white clouds. Um, And I'm thinking just passing up and start something else. Maybe the mountains, the foothills, the tall grass, like this one here. I, I love this piece here. I see a face in there. Yes. Look at exactly. that. Exactly. How long have you been painting? I haven't. I've been off and on. Uh, My therapist at the VA hooked me up with uh, art from the streets and I started going there and I did watercolor and this is acrylic. These are beautiful. This is an experiment. This one here, do you have a name for it? Twisted mind. <laughs> Twisted mind. I love it. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at this. That is an unfinished, but it's finished. And that one I call Alone at Sea. That was my first painting. This one down here, the blue one? Yes, with oh. watercolor and acrylic. I'm going to give it to you to hold. Oh, it's, it's something is resting on it. Uh, yeah, you can just move, move it. it. Oh, look at this. You got... All right, so let's, let's talk about some of these paintings you've already done. This one is Alone at Sea. Loneliness. You don't see anybody in there. 
you got to use your imagination. A guy floating out there in the sea. Uh, he had been shot down and bailed out. Uh, and he's out there by himself. Wow, that's that's alone at sea for sure. Is that something you experienced in Vietnam? No. But you heard no. about it, huh? No. Uh, we, uh, well, yeah, you can say I heard about it, but I heard about it, but I didn't really hear, hear about it because it, it's, this portion is just difficult to talk about. Okay. It's, it's all right. It's fine. Uh, so let me ask you, uh, let's just sit down and, and talk. You can sit back down there. Um, would, you, would you like to maybe try to do some painting on this one while I'm here? And see what happens? Sure. Okay. I, a lot of times I paint stuff and it, it doesn't come out right and I just paint right over it and start again. <laughs> That's what I'm doing on that one. It is? Yeah. So that, that, that stuff kind of happens. So go ahead. I just would like to see what, uh, what you do and how you do it. So you, your medium is acrylics, huh? That and watercolor is where I started to uh, uh, do stuff. Okay, the lighting is better on here, this side, so I'm coming over here. Okay. Different colors are green. So how long have you been painting? Not very long, I would say, just in the... Um, before the pandemic. Hmm. Good, so this is something good to do during the pandemic, huh? Well, I didn't do much of anything during the pandemic. I got just messed up with other stuff, you know, and I can't find uh, I'm not fast. I'm a little slow. I suffer with Parkinson's. I notice you have a lift on the back of your truck outside. Yes, I have a wheelchair in the garage. Uh, I'm just waiting for them to come and do some measurements and the VA's hooking me up with a ramp. They hook me up with Everything I got. Wow, that's great. That is really great. I'm glad that they're taking care of you. Probably using the wrong colors, but the colors that that I have are just what I I can 
Yeah, yeah. So when you came back from uh, Vietnam, if we can talk while you're painting, uh -huh. uh, what what kind of things did you do when you first returned? Did you work? I didn't work for a lo quite some time. Okay. I uh, I couldn't work. I couldn't sleep. Uh, I, I, I wasn't me. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I was somebody else. It wasn't me. Uh, somebody else in, in a different body, uh, different mindset. Um, So did some things happen to begin to help you besides uh, the arts, besides uh, painting? I went, when I came back, I went through a lot. Uh, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, a lot of, as I said earlier, uh, being plagued like with survivor's guilt. In 2015, I got into the VA, and one of the doctors there, uh, before that, I, I kind of got my self together, my, my mindset, my It's kind of hard to explain, you know. Uh, I started feeling better, started working, and certain things would uh, I, I can't think on this okay. picture. It's all right. When I when I came back, uh, I, I felt a lot of the same things. I, I got out in uh, 72. What year did you get out? Uh, 73. 73. So you got out a year after I did. And you were medevaced out, right? Yes. Okay. I was medevaced out too. Uh, I went to, uh, I don't even... I went to a field hospital, and then they shipped my rear end to Japan. Don't know why, but it, I just bounced around from medical, uh, from one hospital to another, and then uh, to Japan, and from there. I stayed, and I didn't get out till I think it was January, February of '74. Uh, I did a tour. I I, uh, I um. So you were there during the Tet Offensive? No. No? No. Okay. No. Tet happened in the 60s, is it? Uh, Tet, 
Uh, as I Isn't recall, sixty-eight, sixty-nine. Uh, you may be right. I'm. I'm not. I'm going to have to look that up. But I know it was a lot going on at that time. Were you welcomed home when you when you came return? Oh man, uh, when I came home, I wasn't greeted like other veterans, you know. That was just my family to pick me up at the airport. Uh, and Austin was different. The old Mueller Airport. It was nothing like what you got at um, Bergstrom International. trees that were more like palms just coming out on all directions that just that's what I kind of gave up on this I couldn't I take so much medication and it blurs kind of knocks out my memories for a while and That, that looks good, what you're doing. I can see it coming in. That's what I do like when I'm, when I'm painting things. I like the music that you have on right now. Oh, over there in the living room. My doctor put that up there. I, uh, they come to check on me. They, I like your use of colors. That's what I say about life sometimes. <laughs> life is, as Forrest Gump said, life is like a box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get until you open it up. this one. Uh, I don't know. It's like, uh, it's a statement. That's one thing I love about art. Art is subjective. And, you know, if, if this is what you're feeling right now, it can't be wrong. You never know. You ever see Picasso's work? Some of that stuff, I'm like, or go to the modern museum, I see some of that stuff, and I'm like, I went and I saw one time this guy had a giant canvas and he had painted a red dot right in the middle of it. That was it. It was in a museum. <laughs> it's like that one. That's what that one started. It, it's supposed to be this out, out in space. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, just stars. And that's supposed to be meteors just passing this 
planet and it looked like uh, I love that one by the way I'm gonna, we're going to take a picture of that of later we're talking about that painting with the, the planet and the meteors going by I was going to redo that one I don't like the way it came out I've already <laughs> go painted uh, that one a couple of times. And I got my grand granddaughter sees me in here and she did that. Oh, she painted that one over there on the floor? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's good. Can't get this grass to come up right. Um, it's not the grass. It's 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 uh, like these palm trees, like their leaves. Mhm. Mm and they're supposed to be a distance. Like you're you're looking. And when, when I don't like what I see, I get so frustrated. I just grab it and <laughs> chuck it <laughs> and get another one and start over. And, I mean, it's, it look, to me, it looks like nothing, but once I add, uh, I'm starting to see your concept there. It's, uh, you know, I'm starting to see, like, you were talking about the palms and the how they shoot up. I, re I remember those in Vietnam and this is reminding me of those a lot. But what's missing right now are the leaves, uh, the way they, they used, the way they drop. I was more up in uh, One core, the north. What was your job in, in the Army, in the Marines? Uh, well, they called it 0317 now, but it was 84, I think, something. That's the, uh, I was a sniper. Um, I do find it hard to talk about it. I, it brings up too much. Too many, too, too many, too many, too many ghosts, too many memories, just too much of one thing. And, uh, well, you know, the art is a great way to, to deal with that. I'm, I'm so happy that you found the art because it lets you kind of, even if you don't paint what's bothering you, it always kind of comes out in the work some kind of way, you know, in a, in a safe way. So to me, a lot of times painting art uh, as a, a former combat veteran myself, uh, I when I get through painting stuff, sometimes I, I can just see, you know, even though it doesn't make sense, I can see the thing that was bothering me in, <laughs> in the painting. <laughs> Uh, I find that interesting. So my advice to you is just to keep on painting. You know, this is, uh, you've discovered it now. And uh, just keep on painting. And, and that's a great way of getting out things that, that bother you. Yeah, I was telling one of my... Maybe I got the wrong brush. I'll just stick with it. 
I was telling the person, her name was Crystal. Uh, I can't remember her last name. She worked at the VA here in Austin. And she got me introduced to painting. And I was going to her therapy sessions and we were drawing. I can't draw worth a lick. And one thing led to another and I started painting with watercolor. Uh, then it just progressed a little bit more and I tried um, the ac acrylics. And, and I'm here um, doing this. That, that. Um, and it seems to take away the deepest feelings that I have in my soul of what if, the what if part. What if I didn't come back? What if, if something had happened? What if, if we hadn't gone on my last mission? December 25th, 73, better known as 25 December 73. That's, that's one what if that I'll never regret because what was done that night. We I really never talked about it to anybody but uh, I started to in one of my therapy sessions at the VA. Um, we were on choppers that night, going on a mission. And Our missions always took us into the North Vietnam, into across the border. Yeah, we were told never to talk about it, never to let anything bother us or never talk about it. They were all classified. held it in for years. The nineteen seventy three Christmas Day. Actually Christmas night. It wasn't even midnight yet. I had done a lot of missions in there, a lot of, a lot of jumps. <sighs> I 
that thing was that one mission changed a lot of people's lives. Including mine. We never got recognition for that night, but uh, it didn't matter, you know. We did something we didn't even expect. We were a small unit assigned to uh, MACB. We were a small eight-man team. We had a corpsman and a medic in each one. That night, I lost a friend, my spotter, my friend, my yeah, when you're in the how they put it, uh, when you're in the shit, you're backing one another and you know, you're protecting not only yourselves, but the guy next to you, the guy behind you, the guy on one side of you, or the guy on the other side of you. You're working as a unit. You're working as if you were one person. We were on choppers that night. To go do a job. And my, I don't want to even want, want to mention his name. He stepped up on the skit of the chopper, turned around, looked at me. took his own life. That what that what kills me about. From four guys in one chopper, another four guys in the other chopper. We came down to to whatever we had, seven. We jumped out. I, I jumped out as he's falling, trying to trying to go after him, you know. And, He, uh, I lost sight of him. I pulled my chute open. Everybody else jumped. We were maybe 20 miles from the actual jump zone. Got down there, started looking for them. They were to find them. And the lieutenant who was with us. We gotta go, we got a mission. We're off course, you know, we're someplace that it's not where we're supposed to be. So I took point 
and somehow I got sidetracked and I'm a mile away from these guys. And I I see that, and I see that. It, it was a camp, it was a VC camp, so I thought. I'm across the river right there. Excuse me, boss. You have a text message. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm seeing all these deep calm. something you're not seeing it until you really look at it again it was a POW camp the LT the first lieutenant uh, sergeant had an army sergeant army lieutenant Navy Corpsman, Army Medic, were all there. Uh, there was eight guards. Each one was on a tower. Make a long story short. We rescued 52 MIAs that night. And I had injured my back and I couldn't carry anybody out. And I stayed to cover their to cover their back. That's an amazing story. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lorenzo, for your service. The lieutenant got him and these guys were weak, tired. They were a mess. They left me with the 60, couple of belts. They set up a small perimeter with um, claymores. I had my M14. with my scope. About an hour later, all I heard was all hell breaking out. 
had a tenant called in for choppers, for everything. Uh, I can't remember what they're called, these huge banana looking choppers, double blade. Coming in and picking them up. And they, they didn't even know where I was and they were dropping an airstrike. <sighs> they came back for me to get me the hell out of there. All I have was eight claymores all set up. Three grenades, two belts for the 60, whatever magazines I had for my weapon. I was ready. I can't even, I'm trying to get it on canvas and I can't, I can't just get it out there. I wish I knew where he was. He came back. I don't even know if he's alive or dead. First Lieutenant Jack Schaefer, United States Army. I know when they were taking me out. I thought I saw him get hit and go down, but with everything that was going on, man. I, uh, I don't know. Everything just, your whole mind is screwed up. You've been there, you know. You know what you feel. couple of Australians. I didn't even know Australians were fighting or had fought or whatever. And then some Vietnamese. Oh, what the hell did you do to me, Glenn? Uh -huh. Nothing, brother. I mean, you know, sometimes... I never thought about that. I mean, I... I thought about that, but I never spoke about it. I never spoke about it. Well, you know, maybe now today was the time. Today is the day, and you know, even this is so personal. Some of it. If you don't want me to share it, I won't. Uh, if you do, I will. But I, I think that uh, I, I think this might have been a good moment for you. I took out eight NBA guards. Or BC guards. I don't know what they were, NBA, BC. I took eight of them out. You thought you were looking at a camp, but the camp, everything was underground. 
the cages. Like this one here on the ground. I couldn't pick it up. Paint the bodies that were hanging, that were tied up. Uh, all I know is right before midnight. Fifty-two men were rescued. I lost a good friend. An army Lieutenant came back. I swore I would never forget his name, and a lot of the times I can't even remember his name. I can remember his first, and I can't remember if it's Schaefer or his last name. Psychiatrist ever talked about this. The way that place was made, it was bamboo all the way around. It was like a cave you went into. Just kept going down. I don't even know if we were in, in North Vietnam or Laos. Because we would bail out in Laos and hump it through the jungle and to the north. You've been through a lot, Lorenzo. I'm, I'm happy that you know you had recall that you had today. You know what you did was your service, your service to America, and we're appreciative. Yeah, but that, none of this exists. None of this happened. We were never there. It didn't exist. It didn't happen. It was all... Look at it like a dream. That's what they would tell us. That thing was so classified. Uh, one of my veteran friends told me, sooner or later, they have to release the papers, the reports. You know, the, the war is over. It's been over. they called it so many different names of police, police action, a war, helping an ally. You know, 
I give Richard Nixon credit for two things. If I was told right, he was the one who came up with uh, this group, this special group. Supposedly, I was told by and I can't remember who told me that he he had the military create a special group within SOG to specially go and and um, well, we were supposed to go out and. Look for SAM sites, destroy them, cause havoc to the enemy. <sighs> Lay as many booby traps as we could. <sighs> Who knew that night? Uh, was going to be my friend last night. Mine. And 52 MIAs being rescued. And nobody would ever know about it. Because once it happened, throughout the years of I've heard from different bands, yeah, we're still missing a lot of American soldiers out there. Well, thank you so much, Lorenzo, for sharing this, uh, this, a little bit about your story and about what you've gone through. Is there anything that you would like to say to people out there about the benefits of uh, the art uh, and in read in dealing with uh, some of your past memories? Doing this helps a lot, but it also hurts when those memories come back. But that, a, a, after a while, I guess you 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 realize something. Uh, that you're not there anymore. You're home, you're safe, uh, you have a life. And all of that was another place, another time. I guess I believe that stay inside of me for so long. Fantastic. Do you uh, do do you do you give us permission to uh, use this video online? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I'll send you uh, something also uh, to sign. This has been fantastic. I I hate to cut this short, but uh, it's been a, it's been just, just my pleasure. And listen, you know, uh, we've got some. I'm going to be, uh, we've got some exhibits coming up that I would definitely want you to be a part of. I know that you think that you're just a beginning artist, but I see some really great stuff here, 
and I appreciate you and what you've done. And I just want to tell you, a thank you for your service again. Um, you know, I think maybe, I don't know, because uh, I don't know you, but maybe today was a breakthrough for you of some kind. If it was, thank God, and continue. You know, I just pray that you continue to grow. Um, if you should have any, you know, problems or anything after this interview, I'm asking you to please contact your uh, your VA people. Uh, and if they, if you want them to have this tape, I will supply this tape to your psychiatrist if you like. Okay. Sure. Okay. God bless you, Lorenzo. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for trusting us and, and, and giving us this story. As I look at this pain right here, right in this area, you can see the back of a man, a person, and down here, the wooded area. Like, so much stuff has come out of these. And uh, this one right here looks like Bob Marley to me. And I see a face right in here. And I see another man with overalls walking into a fence line. Just something that comes out here water and the